Mm -hmm. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to learn about the HopperNet protocol and how to set up a development environment in order to test and develop on top of the protocol and its applications. Uh, the HopperNet protocol is uh, an open source software developed by the Hopper Association, a nonprofit institution based in Zurich, Switzerland. And as you can see, if you go to our GitHub, you can see that everything is open source and available for you to try. As soon as you check the or mono repo, you will be able to see the protocol, which in, in short is a privacy preserving point to point data exchange mixnet, and which has been um, developed on top of the Liberty Bit network and the Ethereum blockchain. Today, we're going to use uh, Gitpod, which is an um, um, online platform for quick development, to spin an online system, allowing us to very quickly test and develop on top of the HopperNet application. Um, what we're going to be going through is pretty much installing all the dependencies and running a local uh, network, uh, a local Hopper network. For more information about the Hopper protocol, please feel free to check one of our links and follow the readme in case you have any questions and instructions. So if you have the Gitpod instruction, the, the Gitpod Chrome extension installed, you can click on that and that will automatically spin this little uh, instance on your own browser. That way, if your computer is not ready for um, development, um, it doesn't matter because it will automatically spin a uh, development environment for you to give a quick try to the protocol. The protocol right now it has um, a very, only one implementation in JavaScript. Uh, it's a HopperD, which is a client implementation for uh, that it's done in TypeScript that allows you to execute some of the current um, proof of concepts uh, features of the protocol. And as you can see, we are installing some of the basic dependencies from crypto, um, some of the um, uh, primitives that we're using for interacting the application. And this is all being done remotely so you don't have to install anything in your computer. The monorepo has been managed by Lerna, which is uh, pretty much a um, monorepo manager. And we're leveraging on Jarn and Jarn uh, workspaces to fetch all the dependencies. And as soon as the application gets started, it runs Bootstrap, which is kind of like a kickstart. Um, of the entire dependencies and the moment they're installed you can see that a, a small node modules uh, will show up here onto the application and then will be available for other uh, packages to, for working. So now that we have um, actually fetched all the dependencies we're going to build all the packages. So all the packages what that involves it involves not only our utilities but also the smart contracts that we are leveraging uh, in order to execute the payment layer of the protocol for the time being. The protocol, it only works on the Ethereum network, so it's um, EVM compatible, but it's meant to be um, runnable on pretty much any uh, EVM compatible uh, blockchain. So the moment that it, it, we deploy on some of the, the smart contracts or build some of the smart contracts, what we can do is run a local network where we can actually check and, in, and ensure that some of the applications for the protocol are actually up and running. If you need more information about the instructions, you can check the README. That we actually can see the preview version here. Um, you can see the README and you can see all the instructions for you to get it started. So what we have done so far is run Jarn, that has been done automatically by the Git repository. I manually created build, uh, Jarn build, which builds the contracts and clients. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to run uh, a network, so a blockchain network that has all our previously uh, compiled contracts. In this case, uh, we're using this library called Harhat, that it's uh, one of the most modern setups for actually kickstarting and executing some actions on the smart contracts. And as you're seeing, we are deploying some of these smart contracts uh, into the blockchain and getting it started. Now, when this has been done, what we have done now, it's only set up um, an Ethereum blockchain that it's able to have these predefined smart contracts. Now, what we need to do is actually deploy what we call a bootstrap node. So the network so far, it's meant to be a peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, but sometimes because of the way uh, firewalls and home routers network work, it's not very easy for uh, node that is behind a home router to be able to reach another node that is behind a home router. So usually what we do is we have what we call a bootstrap server, uh, also known as a signaling server that allows you to pretty much uh, connect two nodes that are within uh, separate or that are behind networks and enhance them 
and provide them with the ability to um, expose uh, an accessible multicast address. So a multi-address is something that looks pretty much something like this that exposes the IP that this is available on and some of on the, the key that this one is connected. In this case, for instance, this is the IP of the container that has been run. And this is the bootstrap server that has been provided here, which this is this is a hopper address. So the, all tokens, all nodes on the network have a hopper address and they also have uh, an Ethereum address which represents uh, their particular wallet that is installed within the node. So now that we have our, our Hopper node, um, pretty much uh, a bootstrap node server up and running, what we can do is we can run uh, another node. Um, but we this one we're going to call Alice. So it's pre-configured to be working with, um, it's pre-configured to be working in a different port and a different host. So that way it can be run within the same container. And what this will do is will automatically create another Hopper node in the same instance, the same uh, configuration that you have done. But in this case, um, it's gonna be provided and exposed in a different port. So that way you are able to test it again within the same workspace within Gitpod without necessarily having to do a further configuration. So in this case, it takes a little bit of time for the process to be properly working. Um, it's going to connect to the Hopper uh, Bootstrap so it's attempting to connect the moment that it's getting and you check the information, you can see that it is actually the bootstrap server. In this case, it's the same address that it's been given here. And of course, we can execute and do some actions on that. So we are able to talk to the, in the bootstrap node and be able to do some actions on that. Um, before we, this, this should be more than enough to get you started. So in case you want to, let's say, do some changes on the background of the Hopper admin, which is the UI interface, actually enhance and do some changes on the protocol, um, you might need to fund these nodes because these nodes are connected to the to a local blockchain. What you need to do is provide them with some funds. Now, luckily, we gave them some funds. Uh, we created the faucet method. So in this case, the faucet is um, and, and a task that allow us to create, uh, to mint token, Hopper tokens and provide our nodes with some, uh, with a balance, with an Ethereum balance. So in this case, if I'm on here, you can see that it's already gave uh, one Ether to this, to this node, in this case, to this particular wallet that is within the system. And if we go back to the actual blockchain, you will see that we actually uh, created a mint called the mint, to uh, mint method on our Hopper token contract, which actually created another um, create a new balance. And in this case, what happens is the nodes, they're automatically registered. Um, whenever they have enough money, they're checking constantly whether they can uh, register to the network. In this case, they use an in initialized account and now they can be shown into the, into the network. And you can see that that has some gas and of course, this will be the same with, in this case, this, this node. Alice, in this particular case, has no balance. So we're going to do the same on particular bash. We're going to run this task that allows us to faucet some money to Alice. And then, oh, <laughs> a small typo here. And then this will provide it with enough uh, money for it to get it started. Because the way the nodes are constant to avoid reducing some of the RPC calls against or node or reduce, uh, even though the mint method will show here, and I run balance here. It's gonna take a little bit of time for this to be updated. This is mostly because uh, we uh, schedule a call for a particular token in a separate RPC call, and then takes a little bit of time for it to match um, when, until it gets updated for, um, for the token balance. So in this case, whenever we do that, let's just, here it got updated now, but now the new method, the Alice node also calls the initialize account, and then they are actually registered into the network, which allows us to start doing some applications and some interactions. And again, uh, if we run our balance, we can check that this balance was completed. Uh, that's it pretty much. If you have more questions about how to get it started and how to um, run the application locally, we're gonna provide more documentation about how to perhaps uh, solve some issues uh, run applications and pretty much solve some things within the protocol. Thank you.